One place that corridors between natural habitats has been a success is in uh, China with the panda population. And Dr. Scheller's research would provide quite a contrast to the research he had undertaken with the king of beasts. And the stakes were high for the greatly revered giant panda of China's Wulong Reserve. The giant panda population was shrinking at an alarming rate. George Schaller's mission in the Wolong Nature Reserve of China in 1981 was nothing less than to help save the country's national treasure, the giant pandas. Along with local scientists, Schaller and his wife Kay trekked deep into the heart of the Wolong Reserve, and it was here for the next several years they would call home. Giant pandas were in a serious decline, losing half their habitat to logging and agriculture. Their numbers hovered around 1,000. The panda's biggest challenge was, and still is, its complete and utter dependence on bamboo. Without it, on average 66 pounds per day, they would perish. Pandas are shy and seldom seen in the dense bamboo. Therefore, this research assignment began at the end. Field biologists spend much of their time studying the droppings of the species in hopes of revealing the habits and needs of the animal. Schaller jokes about the glamour of his job. He has said, there are limits to the amount of excitement that contemplation of a dropping can provide. He was anxious to draw closer to these national treasures. Little did he know how much closer he would get to the pandas. One became a little too close for comfort, Zen Zen, which means precious in Chinese. Zen Zen was a panda Schaller's team was able to collar and monitor. It seems her curiosity was piqued, as was her appetite the moment they met. We put our camp right in the middle of her home range. So she always got into contact with us. And she got so into contact with us and our food in our uh, hut where we were smelled so good, she started visiting. And okay, that's nice once or twice. But then when she chases you out of your own hut to find the food, that's less popular. I go off in the field during the day, I come back, there's a big pile of panda droppings on my bed. Schaller knew that the panda's survival depended not just on habitat protection, but also on economics and politics. Armed with that knowledge, he went to work to help institute logging restrictions and anti-poaching patrols to enable the panda population to rebound. Due in large part to Schaller's efforts and the Chinese government's dedication to protect these beautiful creatures and the bamboo forest in which they live, the panda population has increased to a still fragile 1600. And the May 2008 earthquake in Sichuan province has negatively affected the pandas. As Schaller concluded in his research of the giant panda, he still has grave concerns for their survival. Schaller said, I left Zen Zen in her bower of bamboo, a gentle and brave and lonely survivor who with others of her kind must fade away unless humankind devotes itself to her future. The, the panda gained so much attention back in the 70s when China lent pandas out to zoos. The work there um, goes on, and tell me a little bit about uh, your experiences there in dealing with the pandas. Obviously, Zhen Zhen became very comfortable coming into your tent, but uh, tell me about your experiences there. Well, the experience, the really positive experience is that our project there, which included many, many Chinese biologists and others, uh, the government became aware of what needed to be done. and. So in 1998, they had a forest ban, no more logging in the region, in China, as a matter of fact. Well, this has an impact on other countries because they import the logs, but for the panda, it's been a benefit. And in general, there was a, quite a bit of poaching. That's way down. So the population is coming up. Uh, they've been very successful in captive breeding. Now we're trying to encourage them to release them back into the wild, into areas where the pandas are gone. So all in all, it's been a very satisfying project because the government has been generally interested in improving things. What makes you um, confident that the pandas would adapt after being raised in captivity, perhaps, to, to adapting back to life in the wild? I think it would be relatively simple. You have to transfer their 
stomach flora and fauna, which is used to eating uh, porridge and things like that to get a low nutrition bamboo. But that you can do gradually and release them. An herbivore uh, shouldn't have too much trouble. 